Hey guys, welcome back to Mentorship CEO. Travel restrictions are being lifted, and guys, we may forget some things. So let me remind you of things to look out for if you're traveling with your watches. Let's go. So guys, welcome back again to Mentorship CEO. My name is Clyde Lambert, the founder and CEO of Mentorship, and I love talking about watches. So today's topic pretty much is reminders of things to look for and remember while traveling with your watches. We all travel, whether it's work or just a vacation, leisure to have fun. And we all may be, you know, focusing on the fun and the activities and not remember that, hey, we're traveling with expensive items, things that we value, and we don't want to have bad experiences with them. So I'm going to run through some things that you need to remember. Here we go. Starting one. When going to the airport, we have options of having a carry-on and check-in bag. The bag that's being checked in, that's going away from us, should not have any items that are of high value and that you don't want to lose. Guys, I know we want to walk around and think that everyone we can trust and everyone's trustworthy. That's not the case. Try to always keep close contact with your watches. So that's one. Two. When you get to the hotel, first of all, choose a hotel that has a safe so that you could lock away all your valuable possessions, including your watches. But here's the thing. A safe can be a false sense of security. Um, all safes could be broken into, you know, some harder than others, of course. But remember, again, we can't trust everyone. And hotel employees do have access to that safe. There is a master code or master key, depending on the safe, where they can enter the safe. Most safe break-ins when it comes to hotel safes are inside jobs, are employees that pretty much did what they did. So they know basically the cameras, they know how to get around it, maybe uh, make it a whole confusing situation where maybe room service goes in and they could actually make it a little more technical saying, oh, we didn't go in, the room service went in, uh, we went in to check to see this, that, and the third, but they could make all types of stories. So just remember that, keep that in mind, that yes, having a hotel safe is important, but not ultimately 100% uh, uh, security three some of us have our watches insured i really don't know too much of the details but when i think of it i do consider whether or not having my watches uh taken in another country if my policy covers it so my point is to make sure you read the fine prints and the details that goes along with your watch policy, whether traveling with your watch into another country, if it's gonna be covered. Four, I do have notes here, because this is kind of important. Four, not to bring too many pieces. I know it may be hard. Watches could be like, maybe like your kids, you know? It's hard to choose what you wanna go with, who's your favorite, whatever the case may be. But, I don't have kids. Don't want to lose all. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to. So bring pieces, maybe one or two, three, and enjoy the trip. Next would be at the same time, travel with things that you don't mind losing. Trust me, we don't want to lose it. But at the end of the day, it won't break the bank if we end up misplacing, excuse me, or having the watch taken. 
Next point would be, again, to research the country or city that you're going into. I'm not going to name any countries or cities. I'm not going to do anything like that. But it is important to find out what it's like in the country that you're traveling to. Don't be naive. Do the research. Thorough research. It might not be the fun part of this whole planning for the trip, but it will help you in the long run. And the next point is to figure out the activities that you're going to be taking part in. Whether it's a work trip, sure, you want to have your dress watch, you're going to work out, so you want something maybe a little less bling in your face. But let's say you're going out on a vacation for leisure, to have fun. Think about the activities that you're going to be engaging in, engaging in and move accordingly adding the pieces to the collection i know how it is sometimes when you're traveling you might overpack in clothes the same thing could go with watches you bring too many you're not even going to wear all of them at the end of the day so think if you're going to go to the beach the pool sure you want an example would be maybe a Samaritan. Uh, you're going to dinner. You want a nice little flashy piece. You're going to be walking around areas where maybe you might not know too much. You don't know. You might want to wear one of your lower end watches. Maybe a G-Shock, a Seiko, a Citizen, something along those lines, a Tudor. If you're a baller like that, where, where a tutor is considered your low end. So, take all these key notes into consideration. I'm going to list some watches here at the end of this video that would be considered great travel watches. The, the, the thing is, a lot of people think, okay, a travel watch needs to be a GMT. That's not a true, that's not factual. You could travel with any type of watch. Sure, it's fun if you're going from different uh, state to state, uh, coast to coast, and different countries where the time zone is different. It's fun to really set the time and, and know the difference back home to where you are. Not, that's fun and all, but it doesn't have to be a GMT. So I'm going to post, I'm going to list some watches on the lower end that you could enjoy. And on the higher end, that you can enjoy yes but make sure you know where you're taking them make sure you know where you're going with them and i'm going to also break it into the categories of dress and play so beach and dinner so guys i hope you enjoy these key points and enjoy the watches that i'm about to list right now